Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, um, I will be talking about usability testing, design, and procedures. Right. Okay. Before we talk about um usability testing, design, and procedures, like we need to clarify what do you mean by usability testing, right? So usability testing is very important stage in de any design process, in any design model. So it can be design thinking, it can be user-centered design, it can be um, agile methodology, it doesn't matter. The usability testing plays plays a very important role, a crucial role in any design model, any design process. The reason is when you are kind of like designing, prototyping your software system or your information systems, it is very important for you to make sure the requirements or like user needs that you defined in the early stage of your design process, are they now like executable, doable, and also are they functioning and more importantly, are, are they well accepted by your target users, right? And when it comes to the usability aspect of your system, we need to make sure whether your system is user-friendly, it is easy to use, it is easy to navigate, and also like users, do they like it or not, right? Or do they recommend your system to others? We need to explore, we need to um, measure all these important aspects of your system, right? So which is why um, in this le lecture, like uh, I will be talking about uh, what usability testing means and what we need to do in the usability test and what methods do we need to use and more importantly, how to are properly and systematically designed and developed a good usability testing plan, including a good and a structure protocol, right? So which is why we will be looking into these important aspects in our usability test. Okay, uh, theoretically, like what, what do you mean by like usability testing? So in any software development model, any software development process model or like design model, such as a software development life cycle, SDLC, or like maybe our like design process like our agile or lean or like user-centered design, it doesn't matter. The testing part is, I would say one of the most important are stages in any design processes because this is the time, this is the stage where you are going to test out whether your ideas, your, you know, defined requirements are like executable, are they functioning, are they user-friendly, and more importantly, are they well accepted by your target users or not which is why we need to conduct a proper usability testing section with your target users so uh you may want to conduct like one usability testing section or maybe a couple of them depending on how many um participants you have like how long does it take for your system to complete in terms of our user testing, right? So um, by theory, usability testing is a method, right? Um, that is used to evaluate like a product to do assessment or like it can be a service, right? Uh, in this lecture, um, I will be focusing on a digital product, a digital service, right? But in the real world, a usability testing can be done um, to evaluate or to assess kind of like hardware devices or maybe a, a, a physical service, 
and so on to understand user experience and the usability aspect of the hardware de uh, device or like you know a, a manual system or anything right but in this lecture uh, i will be focusing on the like you know digital product right so the idea of our usability testing is to evaluate your product right so in this case like your product um uh, i'm referring to a complete a functioning a software system in your case right but in reality usability testing can be done like even before you complete your entire system or like entire prototype right it does mean that even though like you didn't finish the entire software you still can do the uh, usability testing to gather feedback from your target users for example um like you know you finish only uh, low fidelity prototypes uh, using figma but you still can do usability testing because it is good for the designers to get the feedback as early as possible in any design process right so usability testing is flexible it is agile and it is applicable to any stage of your um you know the 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 prototyping um task in your project right but the main important thing of the usability testing is to make sure you are testing your system your product with your target users this is very important right so um it should not be the developers or it should not be the designers who design and develop this system because it doesn't make sense right so de designers like design figmas like developers like the coded they developed the, the system and if they are the ones like who are testing your system you may not uh, discover the critical aspect of like usability or uh, issues in your system right so the main idea of our usability testing is to make sure um the system that you design and developed is like user friendly it is usable it is useful and more importantly your target users are they satisfied with your prototype or not right so we need to identify we need to uh, make sure you need to evaluate right so in a particular usability testing, we are going to identify any possible usability issues. We will gather like qualitative feedback, such as like interview data and quantitative data, such as like survey or um like you know the um the questionnaire, right? So we are going to uh, investigate, and also we will kind of like again in investigate uh, whether participants are they satisfied with the product the design the workflow feedback and so on right we are going to observe and also gather the feedback like as much as possible so usability testing is like very crucial stage in our any design model or design process such as our design thinking. So the idea of why we do usability testing is like to make sure the final product, the complete uh, prototype is intuitive, user-friendly, and they are kind of like fulfilling um, user needs, right? And these users are your target users that you define in your persona, for example, in design thinking. Okay, so now we got the idea of like what usability testing means and why it is important, right? Now, we need to talk about like the protocol. Before you conduct your usability test, it is very important for you to have a good plan. In other words, you need to plan it systematically and also um, professionally right it must be a structured protocol because in your team design team you may have like a few um like you know researchers who may be facilitators or like observer or like you know uh, interviewer and and so on right so 
By having a good uh, and standardized protocol, everyone will follow the same procedures and they execute the task, right? In this way, your approach will become systematic and consistent among team members, right? And of course, by creating a good protocol, you will become very clear about like what you are going to do, what you are going to ask your users to do, and what kind of data that you are going to adopt, right? So this is kind of like a good planning, a proper planning, followed by a structured protocol, right? So this is like what we want to achieve. So usability testing protocol is a comprehensive like you know document that contains a set of like instructions and guidelines for the uh, design team and the research team what to do what not to do what to follow what to execute and so on right so basically like you know that will outline the specific like procedures research methods task execution and the measure everything right that will be properly documented right and this protocol will be used during the uh, usability testing sections by one person or like maybe a group of people right so it includes detailed instructions for the facilitators researchers and of course for the participants right making sure that like it is consistent reliable well structured and, and so on, right? In terms of how usability tests are conducted and data is gathered and findings are recorded and of course the analyze, right? So um, before you actually conduct a usability test, it is very important to have a good planning followed by a good protocol, right? So it is to systematically evaluate a product's usability identifying like potential improvements right so whatever we dis discover during the usability test it will be analyzed and also transformed into insight right so these insights will be used for design improvements later on right so that the user experience will be enhanced and like and and like that will be leading to the higher user satisfaction and the adoption rate in, for your product, to your product. Okay, in any usability testing, the objectives are very important, right? So what are your objectives doing this usability test? What you want to achieve depending on the, uh, the software system that you want to evaluate and the participants you are recruiting and also like, you know, the outcomes like what come what kind of like outcomes like are you expecting are you looking forward to right so which is why objectives are very important they need to be clearly set before you um start doing the usability section right so what do you want to achieve this is pretty important uh question in the uh usability testing objective so the objective of a particular usability testing is like to evaluate how easily and of course effectively your users they can interact with the system that you develop and identify any usability issues right and more importantly we will gather the feedback and like you know we will analyze review and basically we will transform these findings into the design enhancement right better user experience so this process aims to make sure that the product meets the user needs right these user needs are defined in the early stage of your design process such as in the uh, empathize and observe and so on right and provides um, a, pro a positive user experience. This is very important. Better user experience, optimize user exper experience, and ultimately it will be leading to a more user-friendly and successful product. So in this way, you will get to know whether your product will be actually de or adopted by the target users 
where they use it, where they pay for it, where they, you know, recommend it to to the other people, or where they um like use it for long term, right? So these are the important things that we need to um ask. We need to uh investigate uh, during the usability test. Of course, like you know, every design project, design model, we have a timeline, right? So, so does the usability testing. Your project management for your design project, you have a timeline, right? In this timeline, usability testing is a part of it, right? So even for the usability testing, it basically has a timeline, right? So it should not be unlimited because you have a deadline you already set, like, you know, where do you want to deploy and like produce your or system like to roll out your application to the target users. So which is why you need to uh, clearly set the timeline for your usability testing, right? So how many weeks, how many days, and how many hours like can you spend for the uh, a good usability test? This is kind of like very important. So depending on your project, timeline your deadline your milestones your sprints in like in the agile methodology or like your the human resources like you have and like the number of participants are very important the number of participants is very important as well because if you are targeting a larger user group the timeline can be a longer right you may need more time right in other words uh, but you're kind of like doing a very quick usability testing with like five participants. So it may be uh, another story. You may have a shorter time. Okay, now this is very important part, the participants, right? So without participants, you cannot actually do your usability test. They are the backbone, right? They are the one who will be critically accessing you know evaluating your product your system you they will be criticizing your 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 system they will be expressing what they feel about your product your system what they think about your system right so participants basically means like in any design processes we talk about your target users right so when you are you know planning to recruit or when you are defining your participants in your design thinking, for example, you don't need to worry about it. You just go back to your persona and like check whether like, you know, your targeted participants are aligned with your defined personas that you created in the early stage of your design process. So, Participants in usability testing are users, right, who match the target audience, right? So when it comes to the target audience, they have like characteristics, they have, they have like attitudes, they have behaviors, they have qualifications, they have their unique need, user needs, they have frustrations, they have like, you know, user goals and so on, right? So which is why when you're thinking to like, you know, defining or, you know, recruiting participants for your usability testing, you have to always go back to your persona and check it, right? So they interact with your product because like the target audience, the target users, they are the one who will be using your system, right? So they interact with the product while observers note their experience. So during the usability testing, they are the ones who will be using your system and the researchers, they will be like observing like, you know, users behavior, users uh, interaction experience with the product, their feeling, their emotions, their expressions, their gesture and many other stuff, right? All these things are very important and they will be making, you know, them essential for identifying usability issues, right? So by observing, by asking, by analyzing users' behavior and users' like experience, 
So we will be able to identify issues that will be very useful for improving the user experience of your product. Okay, so a uh, persona. So I assume that like you as a designer, you are kind of like very much familiar with a uh, persona, right? So uh, I won't cover like very detailed about persona in this video, but there are many resources out there. What do you mean by persona and how it can be implemented, right? So persona is basically a, a fictional character that represents like, you know, your target audience. So this persona gains, um, you know, the characteristics, pain points, frustration, user goals, and qualifications, their daily lives, and so on, right? This persona represent the real targeted users of your system that all users like behavior and characteristics combine, combine into like a fictional character, right? It is like a human like character, like, you know, it has a name, it has a qualification, it has a gender and so on, right? So in any design project, you may have like more than one persona, right? Sometimes you may have um, like, you know, two to three personas, right? So um, this persona will basically tell you like what kind of requirements they have, what their user needs are, what their pain points are, right? So based on these pain points, based on their on their like requirements, now you are developing a system or like you are creating a tangible solution. These solutions are going to address the user's pain points in the end, right? But whether these solutions, the solutions that you created in other words like the features and functionalities that you created in your system you know are they um, really addressing the user problems are they fulfilling user needs or not right we need to find out we need to investigate so which is why in the usability testing we are going to investigate all these aspects right so uh as I mentioned, participants are very important for usability test. So when you are like, you know, planning to recruit them, like if you have questions like, you know, who should I recruit, then go back to your personas and like, you know, check whether your targeted participants are match or like aligned with your, you know, your uh, your project's personas. So usability test participants are often like selected, actually most of the time based on persona that are like fictional characters representing your target users group, user groups. So making sure that the feedback accurately reflects, this is very important. So your participants and your personas, if they do not match, then what might happen? You may ask, right? Then very clearly, you may not get the uh, reliable feedback from your participants because they are not representing your persona. They are actually not your target users. So with this one, it is very important for you to make sure the participants you select are, are match with your persona, right? For example, you're targeting like, you know, um, the elderly people in your project, right? Um, but if you evaluate your system in with your uh, friends, they are a lot younger than your target users. Then in this case, you may not get the real and reliable feedback from your participants because they are not representing your target user groups. In other words, your personas, right? So which is why we have to be very careful uh, in our usability testing. Okay, now you are very clear about who to recruit. Then your recruitment protocol is like very important. Um, actually, it is pretty painful, like you know, to uh to recruit participants in the real world because 
it is very hard to recruit one and it is very hard to convince them like to participate especially if you have a lot of walks like if users if they have to use your system the new technology they may feel like reluctant for example the elderly people you ask them to use your system um, to test your system and they may feel like reluctant or like you know your um, like younger generation they may be very busy like they feel uncomfortable during the usability test or maybe it is kind of like you know just a voluntary walk so they may they may not want to right so which is why like recruitment process is pretty challenging but we have to go through it so the most important thing is like make sure like you understand who your target users are then you define how many participants that you are going to evaluate right so this is very important because uh, depending on the size of your participants or in other words like sample size the the quality of feedback the quality of feedback can be um you know varied for example you want to collect a uh, more quantitative data but you only have like five participants so it doesn't really uh, represent the the your target users you do not have enough um sample sample size right uh for our qualitative feedback right so um you want to interview like maybe uh three people right three participants so it may not really uh, diverse in terms of the um like you know the the part participants participation right so di diversity is like very very important so it may not be from like one particular source of our participants you have to be uh, very diverse like in terms of recruiting your um you know um participants to get the broader uh, ideas and like you know more open mind minded like you know uh, the feedback right um, and also we can mitigate the problem of like uh, bias bias nets right in the uh, uh, in the evaluation right so participant recruitment for like usability testing involves like identifying individuals match with your user profile then how can we you know recruit them like you know we can nowadays like you know we can recruit them like through various channels such as like social media very promising and you can send out email or like you can uh distribute the like pamphlets or like you can advertise in your um like you know campus or university and and so on right or maybe you can um like kind of you know uh, doing some kind of survey and 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 ask people in the real world like but um like you have to balance uh make sure like you know which uh setting will be the most suitable such as control setting or like maybe um in the wild setting you have to think about it right so you need to screen the screen screen the like uh the screening process to your participants applicants are very important so to to make sure like uh, diversity and really uh, relevancy right so that you will get uh, quality feedback a valuable insight from your usability test okay um another one is like for the participants recruitment and the screening process the inclusion criteria is very important why because your persona it basically has like unique or uh, my you know behaviors qualifications users pain points user goals and so on right so in that case like you know the demographic or like gender or like educational background or prior experience they are very important to uh to to check whether this particular participant is uh suitable for your usability test for example if you're targeting kind of like um you know um the elderly people right um who have already like retire or like you know who basically do not participate in participate in the social activities and so on right so in that kind of situation uh how will you define the elderly people like 60 and plus years 
otherwise if you evaluate your system with like you know uh younger than 60 then it may not be uh like relevant or like suitable for your target in that case like you, you may want to make sure what are the inclusion criteria such as like age you must define the age range so if you're targeting like you know gen z right so what do you mean by gen z what are their eight ranges right so are you targeting like you know gender like you know are you very are you very specific about like you know a particular gender group for example uh, lgbtq right then you have to be very careful in terms of uh you know are uh, making sure the inclusion criteria really represent your persona Right. So inclusion criteria can be uh, age, gender, income, technical experience, proficiency, familiarity, many other stuff, right? N nationality, a particular race, a particular gender, the health, background, many other stuff, right? Depending on the individual project. So if you know inclusion criteria, exclusion criteria will be become like clearer because so you will know like who to exclude who to include exclusion criteria basically maybe again like you know um you know the one gender like demographic qualifications they are all right right you are clear but the other one is like exclusion criteria can be um like you know the the conflict of interest right so you design your system your target users are same age like yours right so you have like many friends like you know in your university for example in your office right you're only asking your friends or even your family members to evaluate your system so there is like you know clearly a, a conflict of like interest right so they might have like biasness to some extent because they are your friends, they are your family members. So they may be likely to like, you know, provide good feedback to your system, right? They may say um, good things like good feedback to your system, right? They may not be so harsh in terms of criticizing your system. There is no transparency right there is bias so in that kind of situation you you should make sure the participants are the real representatives representatives of your system right your project right so inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria are very very important in design thinking or any design process okay so informed consent Right. So this is very important. Nowadays, like we do research projects, like you know, in a very ethical way, right? So when you are asking your like other people to involve in your usability testing, we clearly need an our informed consent, right? So in terms of inform informed consent, so basically it means your research design your study design your usability design is um like you know ethical well structure and it protects the participants like you know um like identity or like you know data privacy and so on right so in other words like all participants are very clear about what they are supposed to do what they have to do and what role they have and what kind of like rights they have right they must be clear all about it before they do they engage in this uh, usability testing which is why informed consent is very very important so informed consent is like crucial in usability tests because it it, it makes sure participants are fully aware of like test design process what they are supposed to do how their responses will be used, um, like anonymity, and what are the potential risk, and uh, what if like they want to they they want to stop in the middle of the usability testing? What are the penalties? Many other stuff, right? So, 
otherwise like a lot of like you know arguments can be happen after the like you know usability test sometimes it may be leading to the legal process so we don't want to do that so which is why since in the beginning of the usability test planning you know getting informed consent from your target users are very very important right they should know what their rights are they should also like respect what are like you know the researchers rights are and, and so on right so uh, a transparency or like you know a, an empathy it must be there right so consent should be obtained in a particular usability test through a clear understandable explanation of the test before it begins and often documented in a consent form you need a signature the agree to participate and and under the outline conditions like what kind of technology they have to test how long will it take and understand their rights such as like com confidentiality and the ability to withdraw at any time and their participation can be voluntary right so these are the things that we should we should know okay so the next one is usability testing environment and setting now you are going to do a usability testing or uh, for example you have like all together 10 sections right so you need to decide like where are you going to do your usability test it is in a control setting which is in a, a usability lab or like in a quiet meeting room where you have already set up the our devices like sound system the monitor the computers recording audio recording devices questionnaire forms chairs tables and so on right so all these physical environment mental setting are be ready right before you actually do the uh, usability test if you are also doing usability test in the wild or in the real world environment you have to make sure where how when who and so on right so the usability test environment is either a physical lab or it can be like online like virtual space such as like zoom meeting and so on you have to justify you know why do you choose a particular environment right so in any like usability test you should minimize like distractions and making sure like you know comfort like to your participants and and all the um like you know uh, all people involved in this test right so it is equipped for like observe observing and recording users interactions making sure like we can elicit um genuine feedback by simulating my actual product you know the real condition accommodating both moderated and uh, unmoderated test so hardware and software requirements are important right because in your usability test you are going to record uh, users actions users like you know the conversation user behavior such as like eye movement uh, you know facial expression and so on to be able to record all these like you know users behavior and the like you know uh, actions you need to have like hardware devices to set up for example eye tracking software and the devices ready the sound system audio recorder videotaping if you get a consent or like the monitor or like you know to deploy in your system you know how user can interact with your system it is a mobile base or like using a mouse and keyboard or like touch base or game controller many other stuff right these setup must be ready before you actually do your usability test okay now data collection methods right so since you're going to collect the data what kind of data that you're going to collect so it's a quantitative data like numbers using surveys and the questionnaire or like qualitative method such as like you know users experience uh, observation interview interview and the conversation and so on right so all together these approaches offer like a complete view of a product usability and 
identifying usability issues, right? So data collection methods are very important. Are you going to use a particular software? Are you going to use a voice recorder, video recorder? Are you going to use pen and paper to for the participants to write down the questionnaire, to write down the interview questions, and so on, right? So you may set up all set up all these things like before you do the um usability test. And observation is very important. So how many uh, researchers will be involved in the usability test? So one can be observing, one can be uh, note taking, one can be like, you know, video recording, not one can be asking questions, but it should not be too crowded in the uh, in a usability test. Like it should be like, um, you know, maybe two people, right? So one observer, like one facilitator, and they can switch the roles, like, you know, if necessary. Okay, so usability testing also contains safety protocol, right? Because like not all usability tests are safe, right? We cannot take it for granted. For example, like you're testing, evaluating your protocol, your prototype with your target users who are uh, vulnerable such as like elderly people children or like you know disabled people or maybe some have like you know health risk or otherwise like if you have to test your system and uh, that can expose like you know some potential risk such as uh, radiation or maybe noises or like chemical stuff many other stuff in that kind of situation what is your safety protocol how are you going to mitigate all the potential risk and how to make sure if something happened, what is your protocol to make sure everyone is safe, right? So the usability test safety protocol outlines the measures, right? That That is to protect participants, which is very important. We need to protect, protect our participants and researchers also during the usability testing especially in like physical setting one testing the products can can pose like some risk so it will include like guidelines for making sure the physical safety of the participants safeguarding their like personal and data privacy and creating a testing environment right that minimizes the stress and the discomfort for example like you know um in one project that i involved earlier you know many years ago so we evaluated a game system which is kind of like uh exercise games for the elderly people so there are like there were like certain movements from elderly people to play the game right so in that kind of situation we had to be very careful in terms of like elderly people may not fall right because at a the standing position for the elderly people and when they move around to play the game it is very likely that you know elderly may, may fall down right so our protocol is like not to fall down and also if they fell down what we will do right do we have like emergency do we have like you know a nurse do we have a special aid many other stuff right we have to make sure the measures are ready if something happened we can mitigate the risk and we can uh like you know uh, comfort the situation right but not to happen is very important but what if it happens what will we do so this is safety protocol very important ethical consideration very important as i mentioned when you're doing when you're working on your um, like you know, usability test it it must be um like done ethically, ethically right? Such as recruiting the participants. There is no coercion. There is no like you know bias, and there is no like you know um, you know what do you call that? The data privacy, right? What what are the like participants right and so on, right? And how we will use the data from the um. What do you call that? The usability test, right? This is very important. Are you, are, the, are you using these like data that you have collected from the usability test? 
Are they for like commercial purpose? Are they for research only? How long are you going to keep? Where do you want to keep? How long are you going to use? For what purpose are you going to use? These are very important things that we need to address and be transparent, like, you know, um, in any usability test. So the ethical consideration is very important, which is why nowadays, like many institutions, they adopt, like, you know, the IRB, like to clear all these, like, you know, potential issues in the uh, ethical context, right? So ideally, you should have your ethical like approval uh, before you actually do your usability testing from your uh, institution or like, any other organization. And the next one is usability testing are like, you know, team, right? So as I mentioned in your design team, who will be involving in the usability test what are their roles and what they will do, especially when you have a limited a number of like participants or like people in your design team. So what roles like are they taking and what they will do, right? So there will be like researcher, observer, note taker, interviewer, and, and so on. Okay, the next one, this is, I would say, very, very important. It is very crucial for your protocol, the user's User ta task, all right? So user task basically means like what exactly users are going to do in your usability test, all right? So step number one, what they have to do. For example, they need to log in and register in your system. And the step number two, what they will do. Okay, well, how long will it take for the step number one, uh, task number one? After that, what will you do? They will continue to the task number two, then task number three and so on. Otherwise, you can take a break in between task and you ask like small questions like, you know, uh, usability questionnaire or like a short interview question. So how many tasks you are going to include in your usability test? What are these tasks and like how users are going to do it? This is a protocol, right? How they are going to do it and how researchers are going to observe it. They are very important, and how long will it take, right? So these are important considerations for the user task, depending on the, uh, the type of usability test and the task, the nature of the task, right? It can be um, just a user interface, or it can be a complete functional system. And the next one is success criteria for the user task, right? Okay, of course, user, users will be evaluating your system, but how will you define these success criteria? How many tasks should they pa pass? How many errors can they make? And how much time do they take, right? So these are the criteria that uh, you should define in your usability test, right? So, so that you can define um, like, you know, users succeeded, you know, executing, measuring your task. Okay, now coming to the uh, usability test, like, you know, the question part. Okay, now we are moving to the actual, the protocol, the step-by-step -step, like procedure. Okay, the very first one is like, in, during your usability test, you should introduce your system to your users and of course, like you should explain the procedure, the objective, and and any other like logistic, you should explain it to your participants, which is very important. In this uh, introduction section, you sh you can also you should also include like pretest questions. So pretest questions are the things, the questions that you are going to ask before your you actually do your usability test, right? So that will cover all like demographic, the prior experiences, you know, user like daily lives and and so on, right? So it should not be that long. It should not be very complex because. Uh, otherwise, that like, user may feel like, exhausted. But you should cover like all the important information. You should not miss out like gender, maybe like income, like nationality, depending on what you want to achieve, right? So, for example, you are testing a software system. You may want to ask: Are they using something similar in their daily lives before? 
and if yes what are their experiences and so on right so they are important pre-test questions for your usability test then after pre-test like our uh, suppose users will be going through all the tasks that you define for example you have like five task for your target users for the participants so they will go through it right but as i mentioned uh in some cases after every time user finish one task you might want to take a break and like ask question such as uh, seq or asq a short question it should not be very long because otherwise user feel like very exhausted we have to empathize them Okay, now let's assume like your 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 users like the users like their tasks are completed. They have already used use it. They have already uh, executed right. Then you are going to ask like post test questionnaires. So there are a lot of like usability questionnaires that you should employ in your usability test, and they should be asked after you know users have use a user has already tested completed all the task right so one um popular and like very well known uh questionnaire is called system usability scale right sus so this is very important um well known is is a kind of a pretty short and like simple to use like you know questionnaire um that you know many practitioners like they actually use it covers uh, like all the important aspects usability aspects of a particular system it is uh, applicable to like many platforms devices technologies and so on right then you can use like a, a document or you can use like digital platforms such as google form you know for the users to fill in but make sure like your users like they understand each and every question right so this is pretty important how are you going to measure like you know you can use like five point Likert scale for example strongly disagree to like strongly agree right so system usability scale is like very important so i don't explain how to uh analyze and calculate it uh, in this lecture but there are plenty of are resources out there like where you can check how to interpret the SUS scores, right? So what do you mean by like you know um the 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 interpreted scores like eighty five? What do you mean one hundred? What do you mean or maybe forty five? What do you mean the SUS score, right? So it has meanings and stuff. Like you you should uh, refer to the uh, other sources. Of course, like how many usability questionnaires that you're going to ask in your usability testing all depends right because um you know if you're like you know short of time like running out of time or maybe users like they feel feel exhausted then you can finish with only one questionnaire otherwise you still have plenty of time you are okay with your participant you may want to add up more questionnaire such as like pss uq pss uq like you it covers like a broader you know aspects of um like usability of a particular system such as like interface quality information quality usability and so on right um usefulness and so on which is one the pss uq is very popular one and it contains like 16 digits. So if you want to know, so it uses, uh, you know, a seven point Likert scale, but right here, the lesser, the better here. Whereas here, um, the higher, the better, right? So this is the difference here. So you have to be careful. And uh, if you want to know more, like how to adopt PSSEQ in the project, you can do further research. Okay, there are like other uh, post-test questions um, that you might want to use depending on the availability of time. It can contain ASQ, uh, after scenario questionnaire, you know, UME, SEQ, and so on, right? Um, 
they are a pretty are uh, not you know popular and well adopted are uh, well adopted are questioners so one questioner that i didn't include here is called a net promoter score right you can you can research about net promoter score which is kind of like one item questionnaire so that ask your participants whether you know they want to recommend they want to promote your system to other people or not right how likely do they want to recommend your system to other people so this is another important aspect in your usability test so that you can uh, like predict the success the potential as success of your product right so i want you to look into the net promoter score how to use how to interpret in your usability test right there are plenty of uh, website explain about it okay now the previous questionnaires are all about quantitative right so based on the number and the data but now moving on to the qualitative approach they are very important as well so when you have like especially when you have time you can use miss method right so you will ask questionnaire and these questionnaire are uh, questionnaires are like you know supported by your qualitative feedback or maybe the other way around right so right here qualitative our uh, feedback are uh, feedback are like richer broader and you will be able to cover like many aspects of your system and you can deep uh, deeply like dive into the users like you know actual feeling emotion and so on which is why interview questions are very common in the usability test so post study interview questions and usability testing are asked after participants have completed their task so it can be uh, like you know varied and it can be broader in in terms of you know the coverage can be depending on what do you want to achieve? What do you want to know from your target users? So these are a few um, like examples, like overall experience, user, major usability issues, the features and functionality of your systems and how they think, comparison of your product with other systems. More importantly, what improvements we should do and like whether they like it or not, right? So these are some aspects, but it can be varied depending on what you want to measure, what you want to ask, right? Okay, so overall in the usability testing, what you are going to cover in terms of like qualitative, quantitative, right? So which is why usability metrics are very important, right? So uh, it is important to measure user's task success rate. So how many succeeded the task? For example, if you have five, okay, five out of what, right? Um, for example, user completed like three out of five tasks. So is it acceptable or not, right? And how many errors like they make individually or like on average so you need to aggregate all the data and like you know data analysis and visualization and the time is like very important time very important right um, because you know if they are dragging too long surely there are like some problems and user satisfaction the completion rate and how many clicks they they do they did to complete the task how easily they can land in your system. So these are some of the important usability metrics like that you may want to adopt. Okay, data recording part, as I mentioned, it can be um, like, you know, Google Forms, it can be um, like, you know, documents, or it can be uh, recorders, it can be like, you know, a particular software that will be uh, installing into your computer and it will capture all the user's movement on the screen on the system right so the data recording part is pretty important okay next next is uh after your usability test right but it is important since you are planning for your usability test you should start preparing for how are you going to analyze the data in terms of qualitative data in terms of uh 
quantitative data, how are you going to analyze, uh, interpret, right? So these are all a part of your plan and then you actually execute them. Okay, next is like very formal, like a part of your project management, you know, how much cost you will need because um, conducting a usability test that contains many sections is, uh, you know, are technically not cheap, right? You will need manpower, you will need hardware, software, you might need to pay incentive to your your target participants, right? Or uh, you, you, you might need to purchase like, you know, devices, software system, many other stuff. The cost is very important and, and it is related to your project management. Okay, so pilot testing, which is very, very important in any usability test, right? Before you actually do your usability test with your target users, you should start at least working on a, a pilot or testing, right? To make sure your protocol is correct, to make sure your uh, tasks are working, functioning, and make sure the questions you ask are like relevant and the data recording method is like, you know, feasible and like, you know, um, uh, interviewing section is like, you know, doable, many other stuff, right? Otherwise, like if you didn't do a pilot test, you start doing your 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 evaluation with the um, real users, then something goes wrong then it will be problematic and it's very hard to restart again and to recruit the uh, participants we, we it's too late already which is why in every usability test we should actually do the pilot testing right okay the next one is not it's so optional depending on like how you define in in some cases you might want to give like incentives to the participant which is very common in the in, in the industry and in in the uh, research right but you have to be ethical right and we must have to avoid the coercion and like discrimination and and like it, it has to be transparent right okay the last one is like you know uh, um usability testing design and protocol table right so you should be designing your uh, testing protocol something like this that will Im include like you know the task that you are going to do and the descriptions and the duration then who will do it right and what kind of usability metrics that you're going to use and what questions are you going to ask what interview questions are like you know relevant and and total uh, like, you know, how long would it take, right? So this is very important. So the total time should not be, uh, you know, longer than one hour, especially for the vulnerable group, like children or elderly people, it should not be more than 30 minutes, right? So this is how you should uh, produce as a protocol table and everyone will be following all the tasks written in this protocol, all right? So if you want to know more, like, you know, this particular website uh, has a lot of, like, you know, resources and they are very interesting. And thank you so much for your time. And I will see you all in the next uh, video.